Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show how you can get the smoothest wall with these skim coating tips and tricks. So stay tuned. Skim coating, great way for DIYers to apply a skim coat, whether it's after wallpaper removal, a botched drywall or texturing job, or even after just everyday wear and tear. And if you missed the first video of this skim coating video series, where I showed you all the tools needed to mix a skim coat and also how to apply a skim coat using my paint roller trick, I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, welcome to part five of my skim coating tutorial series. I uh, just want to say thanks to everybody that voted in the comments section of my last video and also in the community section of my YouTube channel. You should check that out if you haven't checked that out. I asked you in the last video to vote and tell me what you wanted to see, whether a knockdown, orange peel, skip trowel, but you guys voted over 50% for me to do a slick, smooth finish on these walls by hand. So that's what I'm going to do. First up, I'm going to sand down the skim coats that I've already done, and then I'm going to show you a little trick. Here I'm using a sanding sponge that's 100 grit on one side and 150 grit on the other. Since it's not a lot of heavy mud buildup, I'll be using the 150 grit. But for some of you, you might need to use the 100 grit to get her down for the next step. It's an old t-shirt, just to wipe the dust off. All right, so here's where the pencil comes in. What you need to do is mark any areas when you've got good light on it, whether it's from natural light, or if you have a halogen or LED light that you wanna shine on it, you can see a lot more with the light. So what I'm gonna do is just go around where I see any areas like that or a scratch. Just any divots, I'm just gonna put a mark to put my colored mud in. I know I need mud there now, no question. You wanna mark everything you see. Feel it too. Do you see this divot? I'm gonna, I'm gonna mud that, another divot. I'll leave a link to this entire skim coating video tutorial in a YouTube card at the end of the video. Actually, I see a bunch of scratches right here. Mark it accordingly. Let me know in the comments below if your walls need a skim coat or what type of drywall project you're working on. Okay, I'm going to show you a trick to do the final touch-ups after you skim coated and sanded the wall. That way you're going to have a nice, slick, smooth finish. My little trick is taking a blue chalk line chalk and adding it to the water. That way I'll be able to see a variation instead of putting another round of joint compound on the wall it all be in white. I'll have a little bit of a blue tint to this which is gonna let it stand out so I know where to sand after it's dry. So you wanna get a little uh, water bottle, depending on how big of an area you're gonna to be touching up. Um, and you just kinda of wanna make a concentrate. I've got this water bottle about a third filled up. So you're just gonna to wanna to take the chalk and add a good amount to the water. Always use the blue chalk red chalk will bleed through your paint. I'd say I probably put in about four tablespoons or so. Put the lid back on, shake it up. That's your water. It's gonna turn your joint compound to light blue. All right, so I'm gonna get the joint compound. It's an all-purpose USG that I use for all my skin coating. Not gonna take a lot of mud. But you want to make sure you mix up enough. You don't want to have to keep mixing up. We want to thin down the joint compound to about a yogurt-like consistency. I'm going to use my blue water that I made with the chalk line chalk. 
and just kind of add it in here. Kind of like baking a cake. You don't want to get it too soupy too quick. You want to mix it in thoroughly. Using my four inch knife to do the mixing. Just kind of smushing it around, moving it around. It'll eventually coagulate together and thin down the joint compound. All right, so we've got that mixed up. As you can see, it's a little blue. It's not like blue blue, but you wanna be sure there's enough contrast. If it doesn't look like your mud's blue, add a little more blue chalk directly to the mud. You don't wanna keep adding water, you're gonna to get too soupy. So here we go. All right, so I've got that colored mud that I used the blue chalk in. And now I'm gonna apply it to wherever I did the marks in the same direction the marks are. What you wanna do is you don't wanna add a bunch of mud on your knife. I'm using a 12 inch because there's a couple areas I saw that had scratches. So I'm just gonna use my 12 inch. You could use a six inch. But again, we're gonna be able to see where we've applied this mud because of the blue chalk. Just a little bit of mud. Do a couple areas at a time. You're the one that's gonna be sanding it, so you wanna keep it tight. That's what I keep telling myself. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Paul, and I've been a drywall and painting contractor for over 20 years. If you're looking to step up your drywall, texturing, or painting game, be sure to subscribe to my channel to keep up with all my latest videos. I just saw a few scratches in here, so I'm just going to hit that corner because I want this wall to be perfect. I'll leave a link in the YouTube card above to the entire playlist, Skim Coating Walls for Beginners. I'll leave a link in the YouTube card above to the entire playlist, Skim Coating Walls for Beginners. Alright, so stay tuned for I'm going to show you how to sand these areas, and then I'll do a primer and let you know what products to use, and how I'm going to fine tune this wall to create that slick or smooth finish. Thanks so much. And if you're looking to step up your drywall texturing or painting game, be sure to hit that round icon in the middle of the screen now to keep up with all my latest videos. And if you have a friend that's a DIYer, be sure to share this video with them on Facebook or Twitter. Check out one of these videos down below.